everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. On this show, we are unapologetic about our commitment to voices of courage, especially in an environment that's often hostile to conservative messaging and faith-filled values. And there is no greater challenge or arena than the media and Hollywood. We've all come to realize that what we hear, what we see, and what we read can significantly impact the direction of our children and our culture, and of course, our country. So what better guest than one of the most watched actors in television history, a man truly taking on the Hollywood Goliath, actor, author, and director, Kevin Sorbo. Kevin, welcome to Better for America. My pleasure to be here. It's, is Hollywood hostile to me? Oh, wow, really? I had no idea. <laughs> Hollywood loves me. <laughs> well, they ought to love you. All of us here at AMAC sure do. And we are Thank so you. excited for the upcoming release of your new movie, Left Behind, The Rise of the Antichrist. It's such a fitting title with all that we're seeing really developing yeah. around us, uh, right? So I'm going to ask you, set the stage for us, if you will. Sure. Why this movie and why right now? Because the timing is amazing for This is the sequel to the movie that came out eight years ago with Nicolas Cage in the role as Rayford Steele. I took took over that role. So people know the Left Behind books. He's the pilot in those books. And what the writers did, it's owned by Cloud 10. They own the book rights and make all the movies starting way back with Kirk Cameron back 25 years ago. And uh, so it's six months after the rapture. And it's where the world is right now. And it deals with the chaos. Uh, The anger, the divisiveness, the hatred, and uh, people denying that even though they saw people disappear in front of them, people were taken. We know hundreds of millions of people have left the earth. Um, But you know that people will find a way to just come up with reasons. Oh, it was aliens or something. They'll never admit that the Bible is any kind of truth to it whatsoever. Um, The writers purposely made a major rewrite a year and a half ago to bring it into today's world. We talk about a pandemic. We don't name it. We talk about it. We show, we show in the news media that still wants to do the same old thing with fake news. Yet one guy stands up, Buck stands out and says, enough of this. Why aren't we telling the truth? Why are we hiding from the truth? It shows governments wanting to take over the world with complete control of one global government, one, one, one uh, currency. And they're talking about that today. So all this stuff is going on in the world right now. And the chaos, chaos that follows is what this movie is all about. My wife joked the other day saying, I feel like the rapture already happened because of everything going on in the world. And God just said, screw it, leave everybody there. We're not taking anybody at this point. So this movie really shows, um, it's, like, it's like a political action thriller. People of all walks of life can see this. It doesn't have to be just Christians, even though I want the choir to support this movie. I want them to bring friends that are agnostic, atheists, people that are left you know, in their politics. I want everybody to see this movie because it's got something for everybody in it. Yeah, you know, I can totally relate to your wife too. I mean, just this yeah. morning when I when I opened up a news app, right? Because I like to to look at various news applications, mm-hmm. see what's happening in the world. Story after story after story is so negative, and the only yeah. thing that really gave me hope when I got in the car and drove to work this morning was that there is a wonderful God, that there's a perfect God who wins every battle, wins every war. And I was so excited to speak with you today because it really reaffirms what I know in my heart and what we want our members to engage and to recognize and realize that the power of prayer is, you know, certainly yeah. uh, has tremendous meaning. But this is a movie that can really inspire everyone. Uh, and as you mentioned, not only did you direct this film, but you also play the lead role of Rayford Steele. Uh, so without giving too much away, can you give our listeners a peek into this character and why you chose this role? Well, you know, it's six months, as I said, after the raptures happened. He's had six months. He's not, he hasn't turned into an alcoholic. He hasn't, he's just, but he's just given up on life in a way. And he's reached a point now. He says, you know what? I saw it happen. My wife warned me about this because his wife was taken. His young boy was taken. I love the fact that the writers leave his college daughter behind because I think if the rapture happened right now, 95% of college students probably be left behind because of the indoctrination they've had through public schools and through college universities. So I love that they did that. So it becomes his story to find out where his wife went with this. And so he opens up her Bible, starts reading all the different passages she marked up. He goes to the church that she used to go to. Who does he find in the church? He finds her pastor who was left behind. And I think in our woke culture right now, our cancel culture, I think there's going to be a lot of pastors who will be left behind. I do a lot of speaking events. When I speak, I do a lot of speaking on pro-life, on Christian education. There's always pastors. There's always 
men and women of the cloth there, and I say, you need to remember you work for God, not government. Because churches have fallen away. Government's favorite weapon, as we all know, is fear. And fear reeled, reared its ugly head during the COVID pandemic. And I think one of the blessings of COVID is parents finally woke up. Because 2 million more parents, 2 million more families now homeschool their children because they saw what, the, what public schools are doing to their kids. And they finally woke up and said, enough is enough. So, it, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Because this movie was supposed to come out a couple years ago. And they kept, the, you know, let's not shoot it, let's not shoot it. So I just shot it a year ago. So we shot it with what's happening in our current world. And Jerry Jenkins, who wrote the Left Behind books along with Tim LaHaye, said this is by far and away the best Left Behind movie they've ever made out of the books. And it's perfect for the time we live in right now. And I do love the character of Rayford Steele. Uh, I, as a younger woman, uh, read all of the books and did did watch as well. And so I am personally extremely excited to, to get a look at this one. Uh, but we really are in a fight, Kevin, of, of hearts and yeah. minds. There's like a spiritual war going on. And the media is a huge tool that we can use as conservatives to fight back. Uh, so many in your position, especially someone like you, who, who's been, you know, most watched, uh, you know, one of the most watched shows in television history, and many in your position would just stay silent, right? You'd say, well, I've, yeah. I've, I've reached a level, level of success. I've got people who love me. Uh, do you think that making this movie will encourage others in Hollywood who have been marginalized or silenced to think maybe a little bit deeper about creating movies that, if not based on Christian themes, then at least include more wholesome values? You know, I, I think it will. And I think there's been a big change over the last dozen years. I think more and more people are kind of going down that road and people are sick of it. They're sick of the hypocrisy that is so blatant and so obvious. I got sick of it. And I started, you know, I started getting more vocal about it. My wife warned me. She said, they're going to they're gonna come after you, Kevin. I said, who's going to come after I said, the Hollywood. Sure enough, about 10 years, my manager and agent called me and said, we can't work with you anymore because you're a Christian and a conservative. Apparently, being both those things makes me a double leper in Hollywood. And that's sad to me because I don't harbor that anger and hate towards people at different points of view. I just don't. I believe in freedom of speech, freedom of choice. God gave us free will. I get it. I, I would love to have just nice debates with people without turning into a shouting match. But my wife warned me, and, she, and I get people coming up to me, whether they're camera operators or other actors, and they're very quietly, they look around like, hey, thanks for being a voice for us. And I go, well, why don't you be a voice for yourself? But they're afraid. We're the new, we're the new in the closet. It used to be the gays in the closet in Hollywood. Now it's the Christians, conservatives in Hollywood that are in the closet. And I'm telling people, don't let other people control your lives. Don't let, don't, don't let fear control your lives. The only person we're supposed to fear is God. We're not supposed to fear government, even though they want to control our lives. So I'm telling people, please come out. But every time I do these movies, I get people coming up and saying, I always wanted to work with you because I love the movies that you do. So at least we got that going for us. But more and more people, I love what the Irwin, bro Irwin brothers are doing. Uh, more and more people are doing more of these kind of productions. And I think that um, we've reached sort of a tipping point. People are kind of tired of all this woke cancel culture craziness that's going on. Yeah. And, and when one person shows courage, it really it, it inspires so many other people. Right. So what you're doing mm -hmm. is really shedding light and you are a light. So we thank you so much. I, I love, too, that your wife, she sounds like just such a bright, bright lady. I agree with her oh, that, yeah. uh, you know, and the, what, what she's telling you here, the reason why I think they're silencing you and others, uh, other Christian leadership uh, across the country is because they do know that that is, uh, in a sense, a threat to this this new cultural religion uh, that's being imposed on so many of us to follow, uh, and that is a turning away from God. So it's so important that we give people hope with films like this, and it's a refreshing contrast to the messages that Hollywood keeps putting in movies. Uh, yeah. So Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist, it comes out January 26th, 2023, and we couldn't be more excited. Before we let you go, tell our listeners what else you're working on in the coming year and how they can support your message. Well, I'm giving them a couple things. Number one, go to leftbehindmovie.com, leftbehindmovie.com. All the information's on there. The trailer's on there. Theaters have worked near you. We got 1,500 screens we're opening on, so please support it. I've got another wonderful movie coming out in September, so we'll have to talk then. It's called Miracle in East Texas. It's a true story about the largest oil find in the history of the world. It is family-friendly. It is faith-based. It's PG-rated. Got a great cast with Lou Gossett Jr., um, with John Ratzenberger, myself. My wife's in it. She did an amazing job in it. Um, then I got the Reagan movie coming out with Dennis Quaid as the president. I'm playing his pastor in it. And I've got five other movies I shot last year that are all in different various stages of post-production right now. And I've got five new movies that I'm going to start filming this year. Two of them I'll be directing. I've got two documentaries coming out. 
One, I just spent three weeks in Israel. It's called the Quest for the Throne through archaeological digs. We, we trace the movement of the Ark of the Covenant along with the tabernacle. And I've got another one coming out that deals with the Last Supper. And I love this title. I'm the narrator of it. And it's called Eating with the Enemy. And I hope people support these movies. We need your support, people. We need it. We need to fill up these theaters. We have a four-day run with Left Behind. All right? We need to fill the theaters up and we'll get extra weeks. We need to fight this battle of Hollywood's uh, that they have because they're, they're ruining our culture right now. They know what they're doing and they're doing it on purpose. They sure are. Kevin Sorbo, you're one of my favorites. Uh, this was just such a pleasure to have you here with me today because your ability to use your talents to evoke conversations across the country, it's exactly why you are better for America. So thank you. We appreciate all that you're doing and that you're going to continue to do in fighting for your, for our, our liberties. So thank you so much. Thank you. God bless everyone and uh, leftbehindmovie.com. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode, you can listen to more just like it. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, or by downloading the AMAC app. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening.